Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. And today I'd like to take a look at this little game right here that came down the pipe. Uh, Bang the Duel. Now this is a another card game. It's a two-player implementation of that system. Uh, no dice uh, whatsoever in the game. Uh, so let's take a look and see what you think. Now in your box of Bang the Duel, you're going to be getting four decks of cards. You're going to be getting, uh, first of all, two 12 character decks, which are the actual uh, characters that uh, the two players are going to be taking on throughout the course of the game. Then they're also going to be each be getting 40 card decks that they will be using during the game. And then, of course, you'll have your hit point markers and then various uh, cheat sheets to help you with the game. And then also a rule book and the reason I wanted to mention the rule book is because it is a very good rule book. It has detailed descriptions of a number of different things including uh, all of the cards that come in both of the 40 card decks as well as the characters both lawful and outlaw characters. So this is a very well done uh, rule book. Okay a two-player game of uh, Bang the Duel is set up this way. Uh, first of all uh, players will take their 12 character cards, shuffle them, and then draw four for the game. Of those four, they will pick two to start the game with, and the other two are set in reserve for when these characters, if and when, they get knocked out. Uh, then uh, players will shuffle their 40-card decks and uh, deal out a number of cards equal to five for this law and uh, four for the outlaws. Then the people have to choose which of their characters is going to be the uh, their active character at the beginning of the game, and that's where they would put their token. One of the things that you have to take into account is the abilities of the people. If the ability of the person has a double arrow on it, as denoted here by the stranger, that means it is always in effect. Otherwise, the effect of the character is only affecting the gameplay if they are the active player. So that is one thing that you have to take into account when you're choosing uh, who is going to be your active player and non-active player at the beginning of the game. The whole point of uh, Bang the Duel is to eliminate all of your opponent's characters. And the rulebook does state that if you want to have a longer game, you can choose to have more character cards available to you, uh, rather than just starting with four. So you can start with five or six or seven or eight, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, shorter games, I suppose, you could go the other direction and, and start with uh, maybe three or, or only two or what have you. But um, that is uh, pretty cool, I think, because it does have a little bit of replayability in it, changing up the game a little bit. Bang the Duel is a game where you basically have uh, three phases during the game. You have a draw phase at the beginning of your turn where you take and you draw the top two cards of your deck. Now, some player abilities will allow you to... Um, change that up, adding to the number of cards that you can play. Some of the cards that will be played on your people will also change that ability as well. It just determines, but the base is two. You always draw two, at least at the beginning of your turn. Then you go into the play phase or the action phase. The game does come with a cheat sheet card that explains very clearly with arrows and diagrams that the red bordered cards, which are your bang cards, can only be played on your act, your opponent's active character. The brown bordered cards, which are action cards, can be played on your uh, on either of your characters or your opponent's active character. And then blue cards, which is the equipment card, can be played on either your reserve character or your opponent's active character. Then, after the action phase is done, or the playing cards phase, you would actually go to the discard phase, where you would count the number of cards that are currently in your hand, look at the number of hit points that are still on your active player, and then, if need be, discard down to that number of life points. With the caveat being that if you are if your AC is at one, you are able to keep two cards in your hand. You do not have to discard down to one. 
It is important to note once again that at any point during the game, your reserve character's ability and any equipment cards that are on him are of null effect unless they contain that icon right there of the two arrows going in opposite directions. Now, how does this person become the AC? Well, during your action phase where you are playing cards from your hand, you are able one time during your turn to change your AC and your RC, so forth. None of the equipment cards or effects that are on the players change, only the stanchion changes place to denote that now this is your active player and this is your reserve player. Okay, so as gameplay begins, the law people go first. And so I will take my hand of five cards that I start the game with and draw two to begin the game. Now, that's my draw phase. Now I go into my action card phase where I can play any number of cards from my hand. So I'm gonna first of all play a barrel onto my RC and then I'm going to play a Gatling. Gatling says that it uh, is a bang to all characters except your AC. So this character, this character, and this character all are the target of a bang. So first of all, my RC's character uh, is able to uh, reveal a card from his draw pile and if it has a symbol, the symbol right here in the top of the card, if it is a barrel, then it is a mist. It is not a barrel, so he takes a hit. And then both of these people are targets of the attack. So if they have mists in their hands, AC will avoid it, but this guy does not have one. So that's that. So that was that one card that was played. Then, going to play a uh, bang on the opponent's AC. And the special text here says that an opponent can play any card as a mist. So he'll play his knife as a mist. And then I'm going to use my shotgun. And this one says if, if it is missed or avoided, you may swap AC uh, you, you may swap any AC with his RC. Basically, you would just be moving the token. So, um, Dalton Brothers are being, there is no mist, so he loses one, and the extra ability of that card does not come into effect. And so now it's my, my opponent's turn. So he takes his cards up into his hand. His active player ability does take effect. It says draw three cards instead of two, so he will draw one, two, and three. And his cards are such that he will play Stealing. Stealing allows you to draw one random card from your opponent's hand or uh, discard one card from play. We would love to make this person get rid of this barrel, but the card says very specifically, except from your opponent's RC. So we will draw a random card from my opponent and Cool, it's a mist. That's good, that'll come in handy. And then we're also going to roll the dice. All right, and so we're going to place an equipment card in front of my opponent's AC. All right, so the dynamite basically says at the start of his turn he has to reveal a card. And if it has the dynamite token up here in the corner, uh, then he has to lose three life points. Otherwise, it passes to my opponent's RC. Then uh, we're going to go ahead and play a Colt on Wild Bill. And Wild Bill does not have a mist, so he loses a life point. Having played one Bane card, and I don't have any other cards that I can use in my hand, I'm going to go ahead and pass. And now I have two life points, so I have to discard. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of... Um, this. Okay, so I draw my hand and I'm going to draw cards, but these cards that target the beginning of the draw phase have to be done before the drawing takes place. So um, we have to reveal a card. And if it is a dynamite token or symbol, then I would lose three life points. It is not. It's a horseshoe. 
So that doesn't happen. And then it goes to the opponent's RC. And now I can continue my turn as normal. I draw these top two cards. And the game would continue this way until uh, all four of your characters, either your opponent's characters or your characters, are dead. And uh, whoever knocks out all of the opponent's characters first wins. So that is Bang the Duel, the card game for two players. Now, some of the things that I liked about this game is that it does play very quickly. In other words, there isn't a whole lot of downtime. You're always involved. Of course, it is just a two-player game, so you're always involved in the interaction. That's a good thing. It never feels like you are just waiting for your turn. Uh, the artwork is very good on this game. I think it's probably uh, better than the original Bang the Card game. Uh, I think it's better than that. Uh, it has a little bit of a cleaner look to it. But I will say this, one of the caveats with that is that the cards, the they're just, the text is just way too small. And so if you have, you know, sight impaired people like myself that wears glasses and, and probably needs a new prescription and all that kind of stuff, I'm constantly having to look at cards and, eh, what does that thing say there? You know, that type of thing. So another thing I liked about the game, and I already kind of mentioned it, was the rule book. It was very well written, very clear on what you're able to do, what you're not able to do, and the clarifications later on of the cards, and then also the character abilities. Kudos on a well-written rule book, I thought. The 12 different characters that you're able to use on both sides, that's really cool because it's going to offer more replayability. You're only playing with four uh, characters per game, so you could, in essence, not use those four characters in your next game and play through a different four. Now, some of the things that uh, um, I didn't like per se, unfortunately, Bang the Duel carries over from its predecessor, Bang the Card Game, uh, this feeling where at the end of the game it can really draw out. Either one person or the other felt that the game should already be over and we're still playing. Why are we still playing? Because we know who's going to win. Oh wait, uh, the person that we thought was going to win didn't win. Oh, okay. Well, the game's over now. So it just had that feel and, and some of the same feeling that, that the Bang the Card game, the original one, the predecessor, the big one, uh, has with it uh, kind of stuck, is residual uh, with this game. So it might play a little bit longer than it really should, and that's unfortunate. Um, other than that, however, I liked how some of the new Bang cards, or the cards that have the Bang uh, attacking symbol on them, have uh, other effects. So if it's missed, then you get to do something, or you get to do something else to your opponent. That was a really cool thing. So uh, I think this breathes a little bit of, of life into a what I consider to be a dead card game because when Bang the Dice game rolled around, I had no reason to play Bang the Card Game again. Uh, it just completely replaced it for me. But Bang the Duel, I think, breathes life into that card game. And whereas I still don't really want to play Bang the Card Game, the big one, I'll pull this out and play this with my wife or my, one of my sons or my daughter or something like that every once in a while just to have a, a little bit of fun uh, while we're waiting to do something else or something like that. It is a filler-ish type game, but it does have that uh, thing where it could go a little bit longer than it really should su supposed to go. So that is Bang the Duel. Uh, try it before you buy, people, and we'll see you on the flip side. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.